When this solid waste district was first created, it was anticipated that the life of this facility would be about 100 years. And this whole region has grown tremendously. We have a lot of confidence that, you know, this, uh, this is a, a project that's never going to leave the community. It's always going to be here. And so we wanted to be sure that it was done with the best technology. That's one of our biggest goals is not wasting any taxpayers' dollars. We understand that the money that we're operating is from the communities that we all live in. And I wanna make sure that we're spending all of that money wisely. And any expense that we do incur is either gonna to go towards more of an efficiency or reducing overall costs. So we're always looking for ways that we can become more efficient to keep costs low. The way the landfill works is we uh, dispose of the waste in one section of the site at a time and each section is called a cell and each cell has to be prepared a certain way. Um, the cells um, range from 15 acres up to 30 plus acres. Uh, we try to build the largest cell that we can possibly build because the more that we do with today's dollars, the more money that we save in future dollars. We're just in the process of completing cell six here in 2017. Currently, we're doing about a 23 acre cell. Um, we build everything in peaks and valleys. The first layer is excavation. We excavate the native soil down to the elevation that we see fit. Once we've got final excavation, we start to build on top of that layer. On top of the native soil is the first liner. Um, it's called the geosynthetic clay liner. It is basically felt that is sandwiched in between bentonite. The purpose of that is once bentonite gets wet, it expands, so that's your first line of protection. On top of that geosynthetic clay liner, you put a 60 mil HDPE liner, which is a, a thick, heavy duty uh, plastic liner that's really hard to deconstruct. We fuse that together and the purpose is uh, we don't want any holes in that liner whatsoever. On top of the 60 mil HDPE liner, we put a felt liner that's about a quarter of an inch thick. That's another protective liner that protects the HDPE from any puncturing. So we fuse that together and the purpose of having the geosynthetic clay liner underneath of the HDPE liner is just in some case, if you did get a liner penetration, that bentonite would come up through that HDPE and plug that hole. And if you can just imagine, we're talking, you know, multiple football fields size of liner. So it looks like carpet when you're laying it out and you have to basically fuse that carpet together so it becomes one large carpet. Well, once we put the uh, felt in line, we construct all of the cells in peaks and valleys. So in the bottom of each valley, we have a horizontal uh, pipeline that goes through the entire length of the landfill with a perforated pipe. That perforated pipe is um, installed with the thinking that there are going to be liquids that get to the bottom of your landfill. We want to be able to collect those uh, liquids and we want to be able to control those liquids. So the liquid that we're talking about is called leachate. Leachate is any accumulation of moisture that drips through the trash. The purpose of building everything in peaks and valleys is so we collect that leachate and once it hits that perforated pipe, it's gravity fed down to a sump and we collect it right there. It will eventually be pumped to an evaporation pond uh, south of our site and all of that leachate will eventually be evaporated. So that's how we control the leachate. When we weld that pipeline in each one of those valleys, we make sure that on top of the, the pipeline, we put a crushed gravel over the top. It's a big rounded three inch minus gravel. The thinking is the bigger the gravel, the less restriction we have for collecting that leachate. So on top of the drainage rock, we place an 18 inch uh, layer of aggregate along the entire portion of the new cell expansion. So the reason that we um, line our landfills is for the environmental protection. We want to make sure that none of that leachate penetrates the groundwater or penetrates the liner to get into our groundwater. We want to make sure that we're good stewards of the environment. We want to make sure that we're not contaminating the groundwater whatsoever. 
We do uh, quarterly groundwater monitoring to ensure that we're not uh, contaminating the groundwater beneath us. I guess what's the first thing you think of when you see a picture of trash? You know, it's pollution, right? So uh, what, what types of pollution are you going to see at a landfill? Because that trash, you know, it's just a big pile of trash. So air pollution and groundwater pollution, surface water pollution, those things. So all the controls that we put in when we build a new cell are to protect from those things. Once you place waste into a cell, anywhere between 6 and 18 months after it's placed, it starts to decompose and it creates what we call landfill gas. Landfill gas is basically uh, made up of 50% methane, 40% CO2, and then about 10% balance gas with under 1% oxygen. So once we start to emit that methane gas or that landfill gas as we call it, um, it does have the potential to uh, get into our atmosphere. What we do is we construct horizontal pipelines and vertical pipelines that are under vacuum throughout our entire landfill and we actually collect that in a vacuum. So we test our landfill emissions every six months to ensure that we're not emitting those harmful gases back into the atmosphere. One of the most exciting developments in this operation is that we're in the process of constructing uh, a system to use that landfill gas to generate electricity. The gas will be used productively to create electricity uh, that will be sold back onto the grid. The, the landfill is producing methane. You have kind of three choices. You can let it vent into the atmosphere, which is a very irresponsible thing to do. Uh, you can flare it, which is just simply to say to burn the methane. But the methane has power production potential. So to the extent that we can create an effective and efficient system here at our landfill, gather the gas and pipe it into a generating station, burn the gas in an engine designed for burning landfill gas, it's cleaned as it goes into the engine so it's a good fuel, that's just more environmentally efficient. And my community really supports that type of activity. That's why, as a member of this board, I voted for this project and uh, I'm really pleased about this project. We feel like we're going to have a good system for a long time to come.